Hi guys, my name is James, welcome to the channel and thank you for coming to watch. Today is the sort of review of my latest guitar, which uh, of course you know is this Gold Top P90, my first ever Gibson and I've got to say that's a massive source of satisfaction and pride for me, uh, something I've always wanted. Now I've had a chance to play with this for a couple of weeks and I've come up with a, a quite a big list of things that I love about it and a couple of little things uh, that I don't. So I thought it could be useful if you're thinking about one of these to go through that. Now, let's start with the obvious. You buy a guitar with your heart and so the looks of it are a really important thing. For me, this is just one absolutely stunning, stunning guitar. First of all, it's obviously come back in vogue right now. A lot of people are playing with gold tops from Robin Ford to Joey Landreth. And to me, you know, that did influence me hugely, but I hadn't really given them a proper look until recently. Uh, and I fell in love with it. And I've got to say, from all the horror stories I'd heard about Gibson over the years, um, they've obviously cleaned up their act, new ownership, a new standards, and I was properly impressed when I opened the box and this is what I got. I will just show you one or two little imperfections, but frankly, I'm just so happy uh, with it in terms of the quality of the finish. Not to say that it's perfect, and not to say that they couldn't have done better in a couple of places, but we'll get to that at the end. So for me, the look, the, the, the absolutely stunning finish on this guitar, you couldn't want more. I mean, this glittering gold shimmering top is just stunning. And every time I look at it, you know, I feel really, really happy and uh, like I made a good decision. On top of that, the fretboard is stunning. You can probably see that it's it's a really gorgeous shade. I think it's been picked carefully, the type uh, or finish of wood that they've gone for. And the fact that it's, you know, it's not super dark and it just goes also with the back of the guitar, which is quite light. Now, originally that was actually something I didn't love because historically I always wanted a sunburst Les Paul and that would have a darker reddish tinge to it. And it's taken me a while to get used to what really to me looks a bit like my classical Spanish guitar at the back. But you get a feeling for the age of this design when you look at that and that is again really something interesting to me anyway. Uh, on top of that, you know, I love these types of tuners. That's something I always wanted having come from Fender, which has its own design language. You know, I wanted this because, you know, I grew up watching Jimmy Page on tape. Um, and I'd fallen in love with the shape, but you know, something about the look of these tuners. On top of that, the, the little details, the cream of the, the sort of soap bar pickups, the P90s, and the, the sort of hat shaped knobs here, which I just think, you know, they've picked the right color and they've, they've done the right thing. It, they've got the thumb bleeder um, bits on them, which I find useful. I like to know what number I'm on so I can remember it for next time. Then we've got the beautiful bridge, which is like the um, ABR1 bridge, I believe. And, you know, I think it's great that they put on... It. Now, the Gold Tops didn't originally have these, I believe. They had a different type of bridge, but I think this looks great. And from what I read, it's easier to, to change strings and that sort of thing. And then um, I also really like this. Uh, so I guess some people would take this off, but I like the scratch guard. I might one day take it off to have a look. Um, I think it's quite easy to do. So I'm happy with the finish and I think it looks absolutely stunning. So then what's the next thing that you think about, you know, when you pick up a guitar is obviously the sound. Now I'll play a couple of little demos at the end of this, but just to say from the very beginning that the first time I plugged it in, you know, I was blown away by the, the amazing, beautiful, big sound that you could get from it coming from single coils and then uh, to this. They are also single coils, but there's definitely more punch, more power, more grit. There is a bit of a downside to P90s, which I'll come to later, but there is also a massive upside. I think they, they have a definite character to them, which some humbuckers can, can sort of lose that character. You know, they're really smooth um, and the amount of power they've got really drives and overdrives, and that's fine. But this is always on that edge of breaking up and it's, you know, you can't get a fully clean tone really easily with this. And I think that's a great thing because, you know, you have different guitars for different reasons. And one of the reasons I wanted this specific guitar, because I could have got it with humbuckers, was the P90s. I think they're gorgeous sounding pickups. I prefer the rhythm channel to the treble. I think it can get a little bit sort of, um, what's the right word? 
is weedy the right word? Maybe not weedy, but they're sort of a bit uh, honky, you know? I'll just give you an example. So the rhythm channel, better if I turn it up. So that's got a pretty rounded, beefy tone. And then you put the treble on. Now you can make it work for you and the way that you set up your amp or any pedals that you use can really add some punch to that and, and give you the sound that you're after from that treble pickup. But it is by itself a little bit honky, a little bit weedy. But going back to what I love about it is that grit. I mean, if you listen to just its natural tone. You know, it's already got some great grittiness to it and then. And that just going into a clean channel on my amp and it's not particularly sort of uh, driven on the volume to, to break up um, the tubes right now. So I think that's fantastic. And the minute I picked it up, I loved that about it. So, you know, the sound is in the end, the most important thing about your guitar, but the fact that it looks great means you want to pick it up, you know, all the time. And that gives you more reason to play, more reason to practice, more reason to figure out what you're doing and your own tone. The sustain that you get on this from the mix of the pickups and that uh, mahogany body, which is just wonderful. I mean, you can really... You get great sustain. It doesn't sound sort of artificially sustained, if that makes sense, but it's, it's just to do with the resonance of the instrument itself, which is great. So apart from the looks, apart from the sound, the pickups, what else do I love about it? There's just a feeling that I get and it happens also with the Fender Strat, that's probably the only other guitar where the connection you've got with the music you've listened to in your life and the people you've seen play it adds an extra spark. So let's say from Jimmy Page to Peter Green to Robin Ford, you know, there are so many great musicians that have played this instrument that you immediately have a reference frame now, they didn't all play it with P90s, but Robin Ford quite often does. And it gives you something, it's like you experience this instrument in more than just what you have in front of you. You have a whole context to put it in, and I think that just makes playing the guitar so much more enjoyable and inspirational. So I love that. Um, and I actually, I would say that's one of the more important things for me. I also love what this instrument represents. You know, this is a 50s Gibson Les Paul. This is the decade where electric guitar went from incredibly primitive um, and just a kernel of an idea through 50 and 51 and you had the Telecaster, the Nocaster and then you started by I think 54 to get you know these Les Paul instruments which were to me a great sort of yin and yang with the Telecaster uh, and, and also what would become the Stratocaster you know completely opposite instruments and so it's great to, to be able to play both you know they bring out a different character you know whereas when I'm playing on my Strat, I tend to go for the um, sort of Hendrix to SRV to John Mayer sort of idea and the way of playing and often using my thumb over the top more and really going for those sweeter notes. With this, sometimes you just get down and dirty. You get really go for that bluesy, gritty, tweed uh, amp, dare I say, sort of thing for me. And what this, this instrument represents, it just inspires you every time you pick it up. And to me, you know, Fender and Gibson are the two great brands in guitar, of course they are. But there's something about Gibson, to me it was unattainable when I was young. You know, I could find um, a Fender when I was, you know, pretty young, for under a thousand pounds you could get the real deal. But to be over a thousand, and I think when I was young it was probably 13, 1400 pounds, I can't remember exactly, to get into that, to get into the Gibson, it was just completely unattainable. Um, <clears throat> on top of that, I always, um, sort of held this instrument up on a pedestal and I thought, you know, until I can play well enough, I'm not gonna go there. And I'm glad to say that I finally felt that, you know, I'll never fin finish improving as a guitarist, but I've got to a point where I thought I can handle it. <laughs> and um, however silly that might sound, you know, that's what this instrument represents to me and maybe it will to you. 
And on top of that, you know, I dream about having a whole collection of Les Pauls from throughout the different eras. And I wanted to start with something from the very beginning, you know, the P90 pickups that they came up with in the earliest times. And then the gold top, which represents that and this sort of um, 50s neck. It's great to start at the beginning, I think. And that's how I felt about it. So probably next I will go for a burst and one day maybe a 59 reissue and etc, etc. Another thing I, lo I love is the neck. I've been hearing for years about the size of Gibson necks. Well, I've got to say, coming from Fender, it's, it's a different shape, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's huge. I mean, there obviously must be much bigger ones than this, but I thought the 50s ones were supposed to represent a large uh, shape. But my 52 reissue Telecaster has, feels to have a much bigger neck and more of a baseball bat. This is nowhere near a baseball bat. And I have no problem in noodling up and down. Uh, it doesn't feel too big. It actually just has a lovely feel to it. Now, it doesn't give me the same, with the, with the length of it being very slightly shorter and the way the, the, the body sort of butts in just up here, I don't necessarily feel that I play the same way, but that's a great plus point to have different instruments to feel different ways to make different music. So there are so many things I love about this instrument. I could go on, I could go on about the inlays, which I just think for me, again, it's that reference point. Those inlays are gorgeous. They look really great on here. The binding, I think, you know, that cream binding with the gold top just looks fantastic. And to me, I just received it in a condition that I was so happy with. It was pretty much flawless. So, so far, my experience of Les Pauls and Gibson is fantastic. But now onto a couple of minor, maybe minor negative points. <clears throat> I found uh, that it wasn't perfectly set here in the sense that I can see a slight gap. Now that might be something that's totally normal and the way it should be. So please let me know down in the comments uh, for those of you that have a lot more experience in this than I do. Is that normal just to see that gap there? Um, the second and biggest thing that's a slight negative for me, the, the, the tuners look great. These are not um, Cluson or, or Grover. These are Gibson Deluxe, I think it says on the back. The instrument just goes out of tune constantly, especially the G string. I tuned it yesterday, so it was in great tune using a poly tune pedal. Today, the G string was reading F sharp and everything else was slightly out of tune. I'm just gonna check here on the tuner. So I tuned this not 10 minutes ago and it's already slightly flat. Yeah, it's already slightly flat. I might as well tune it. <laughs> so. I think that's something that I'll have to get used to. And if you're going to play with this instrument live, you better be ready to just give it a very quick tune, especially on the G string. Just something to be aware of. They seem to be a little bit inconsistent in how much you turn them and how much that affects the tune of the string. For example, my A just seems to change massively just on the smallest of turns. It's not a huge point. Uh, it's just something that you should know so that you're aware of keeping it in tune. What else? Well, one of the positive points I gave was how the P90s are great and interesting pickups and this guitar has its own individual quality and sound and I love that, its personality. But again, this pickup I don't love, the bridge one. It's not that it's awful or it doesn't have uses, but for me, it doesn't... Normally, I, I think of going over to a bridge or a treble pickup and having all that punch and then going into your solo or whatever it is you're going to do. But for me, on this instrument, on this guitar, I'm probably going to be sticking to the rhythm pickup a lot of the time. Um, I love it. I think it's beautiful and it's rounded, but it also breaks up nicely, you know. Just love it. So that's another neg the negative point on it. Another one is, although generally the fit and finish is great, and I should have mentioned the price, uh, I think it was 1849 or 1899 pounds. That seems to be lower than it was a few years ago, so that's great. To spend under two grand for me on a Les Paul was made it more attainable and more interesting. So I think the price was another positive. Uh, but on the negative side, you know, a couple of things feel cheaper. The um, this little poker chip doesn't feel particularly expensive, and when I first received it, you know, this was very loose and coming off the little knob that goes on the end. I don't know if you can, let's, let's put it here. Well, this has a very cheap feel. It's just a sort of molded plastic 
thing. I haven't got any great confidence that I'm never going to lose that. So I hope they sell spares. I'm trying to think of other negative points about this guitar. You know, I don't think the fact that it's less versatile is a negative point. I think you use that character to its strength. You know, you pick up this guitar for a specific reason and it gives you the goods that you're after. So the fact that it's not versatile could be a negative, but it's also a reason to have it in your arsenal. I would say if this was gonna be your only guitar, it's not the one I would go for. I'd probably either go for a Strat with all its versatility, or I'd go for a Les Paul with humbuckers. And if you really you know, want versatility, then something with um, the sort of various uh, split coil options. Um, you know, this doesn't have any of that, but this invokes a particular time period and feeling of playing and look and character. No, I can't actually think of any more negatives. The tuners aren't great, it doesn't stay in tune, but I think I've heard that that's something that Les Pauls in general have a problem with. A couple of the fit and finish options are a little bit cheaper than you might want, but sort of reflected in the price. And, uh, that is it really. I didn't get, I didn't, it didn't come with any real dings or scratches, nothing that didn't look like it hadn't been properly made with care and attention. So I love it, the weight of it. Now I'm a big guy, um, you know, I weigh somewhere around 250, 260 pounds. So to me, I've got to say this nine pound two ounce guitar doesn't feel like it's got any weight at all. Um, if anything, I wish I'd gone for a 10 pound guitar, but I would say that it's, if it is, if you feel like it's going to be heavy, it's very well balanced. You haven't got too much weight on this end. You haven't got too much weight on that end. So to me, so far playing for three and four hours at a time, there's no fatigue here at all. So I think that's something uh, that a lot of people talk about, but I personally don't feel like that's a big deal, especially if you're a bigger guy. So I thought I would just play through a couple of the positions on here. I'm going to play uh, in a relatively clean setting. I'm just going to turn up the volume a little bit. Let's just play through the tones a little bit. I'm going to start in the rhythm. Everything's on full. So uh, if we turn the tone down to five, let's see what happens there. Okay, let's go into the middle position. Tone down on both guitar, uh, both uh, knobs. Turn the treble one down halfway. So if you do that, actually, that's quite a nice tone. So let's go back to the rhythm. So that's only on number five, the um, treble pickup, but it is a little bit weak if you can hear that. We turn the tone up. So that's at number seven. So 
So that's something I hadn't actually really noticed before is the first half or even six or seven out of the volume control is not that useful on the treble pickups. So that's five and a half. This is seven. Eight and a half. Nine and a half. Not the best pickup here, and also the volume control is maybe not doing it justice. To be able to not play below about six and a half, seven is a little bit annoying. Um, I suspect uh, some good game pedals might help fix that. Whereas if you go to this uh, neck pickup and you go down to three, let's see. It's definitely much, um, got much more to it than the other pickup in the same volume. This is such a great pickup, I love it, I really do. Okay, I'm going to put it on um, the lead channel of my amp. Let's see what we can do here. So let's try now the treble pickup. Again, um, as you turn it down, it really hasn't got much to it. I think the treble pickup is, um, it's a limitation to this guitar, which will work for some people depending on what they're looking for and you know if you're going for the Les Paul for its full fat uh, nature and it also versatility then this wouldn't be the, the guitar for you I don't think. Um, it does what it does, it does it beautifully and it is a beautiful and inspirational instrument but uh, it has limitations to it in which case I would say a Strat or a full fat Les Paul will stand you in better stead if, you're, if you've only got one guitar. Uh, if you're looking to be a session guitarist, then, you know, again, it's very limited um, in many respects. But if you play in a band and you know what sort of music it is that you create and you love it, or if you're a lover of, I would say, early blues, um, some types of rock, um, then I would say this instrument is awesome. And if, like me, you've always preferred neck pickups anyway, then I would say go for it. Well, anyway, that's it for this one. Um, you can see that generally I, I love most of the things about it. It's got a couple of weaknesses. It's got a couple of creative limitations um, and a couple of things that are a little bit cheap and nasty like this knob, but it really doesn't detract. Uh, and I hope that this video has helped. If you're looking to buy one of these, then um, think about what I've said in terms of versatility and what sound it creates. But if you love the look of it and it fits what you're doing, I would say just go ahead and order. Um, Gibson seems to be doing a much better job. 
If you like this sort of content, please think about subscribing or giving the video a thumbs up. It really helps. Maybe share it with your friends if uh, they also like playing guitar or looking at electric guitars. Um, and I hope it's been good. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.
Thank you.